So, ladies and gentlemen, the last of this morning's talks before we have our little break is from Eliana Lacerdo from uh, School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in London. This group uh, at the school there have been absolutely amazing over the last five or six years, building up uh, not only a wonderful national cohort, which we'll be hearing about later on, but also doing what we heard from our last speaker, really, which was to develop collaborative links across different countries. And this particular network called Euromine is something that is illustrating how different countries can come together around this very complicated clinical uh, area. And we're very, very pleased to have you. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, and uh, I, I have the sense that I will be kind of cutting a little bit of what the, the excitement of findings and kind of zooming out in, in the more mundane things of uh, collaboration. So when I say mundane, because we are trying to get research done and uh, it's uh, basically in terms of putting together people. Uh, and we started, just to give you an example of what we have been trying to do with the Euromin. The idea of collaborating with European colleagues started in 2007, around 2007, when we started the MECFS research at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine as a small group of two people. And then uh, we were uh, joining some colleagues and we host a meeting with colleagues from Italy, France, Norway, uh, Belgium at the London School and uh, we thought about putting up a grant application for studying MECFS in Europe uh, with the uh, framework 7, uh, framework program 7. So obviously we didn't get the grant and then we tried again in 2008 and then uh, we didn't get the, the grant again and we push again and then we got a grant from the cost which is uh, a network kind of enhancer and uh, it's EU funded. Oops, sorry. So uh, the background, I think that we already discussed a little bit about this, which is to tackle the contextual, contextual and scientific challenges in, that MECFS has. And the Romine proposal, I will talk a little bit about that. Uh, the network timeline and how we establish the network and I will discuss or present to you uh, where we have been so far. So, MECFS research in Europe, uh, there was a previous absence in collaborative approach. The research and health services are concentra concentrated in a few countries, and uh, we could say in a few people, actually. And uh, it's very fragmented, and the way to go into collaborative collaborative work is mainly to enhance the paucity of research, uh, resources that we have available. So I think that this is already established, unknown etiology. There is a clinical variability that Alan showed us now, but we have seen this in publications around, uh, talking about subgrouping of patients. We have lack of diagnostic biomarkers, and we have some different, I think that up to 20 clinical definitions. Uh, the treatment options are quite limited at the moment because of the lack of understanding. And uh, there is a high associated socioeconomic burden that it's not, uh, I think that is not really appreciated. So the idea was to look into this and to establish a sustainable network of researchers from different fields. So we have this uh, multidisciplinary approach. 
and uh, the way we designed this network as a, a proposal to, to be assessed by the cost was writing down task objectives, so basically was to collect some population-based data and to synchronize the way we collect data and biosamples to assess potential biomarkers uh, and this, in order to synchronize, we have to agree on the way we are uh, selecting these patients using specific clini clinical definitions for clinical purposes and research purposes and also to uh, draw a kind of support in terms of showing socioeconomic impact. And I think that uh, the monies can talk. So this is one of the objectives. Uh, and our methodological strategy was to uh, deliver some uh, kind of picture in, in terms of Euromin research in MECFS uh, by organizing working groups. So we have six working groups, the epidemiology, <coughs> biomarkers, social economics, clinical and research, research and diagnostic criteria. And we have two kind of supporting working groups, one for conference seminars and training schools. Uh, and the main idea of this working group five was to engage young researchers into the, the uh, network and dissemination of patient involvement. Uh, so the, this is basically a diagram that we try to integrate all the working groups. So we started in the timeline with working groups one, two, three, four that could lead to working group five and finally the dissemination which is working group six. So the timeline was we, one of our colleagues in Latvia decided to kind of revamp the old proposals to the work uh, framework program seven. And then uh, we wrote this new approach proposal with the original ideas. We submitted the proposal in 2015. We got a very good mark score from the uh, cost reviewers. And then we established the network, which is very kind of following the cost protocols in April 2016 in a meeting in Belgium. And uh, we, this network is a bit interesting because the way it is, is during this first meeting, we have uh, to appoint the man management committee. And not necessarily people who wrote the proposal are in the management committee. But all the cost representatives, the national cost representatives, they will appoint people that they want to be part. So I can tell you that in some countries, particularly some Eastern European countries, we have people that heard about the MCFS, but they never work with this, but they wanted to be part of a, a collaboration, an international collaboration. And then they talk to the cost representatives and then they will uh, be named as part of the collaboration. So we have a very exciting, diverse group, I would put in this uh, way. So uh, these are the, this is the timeline for the work packages with some kind of deliverables. And uh, all the six work pa working packages. Mm -hmm. And so far, we started with a number of 10 countries. And we have now 21, including one near neighbor country that is not part of the European, but it's there in the, um, in the network <coughs> as one country that can observe and can uh, give opinions, but they don't, they don't have the right to vote. So we have uh, 
the increased number of countries that we have, 10 countries uh, higher than when we started, we include inclusive maintenance target countries. And I show you in a minute what this means for the cost. Uh, we have two management committee and core group meetings a year. This is covered by the, the grant. And the grant is covering only specific tasks, not research. So it's basically a grant for networking. Uh, and the working groups have been established. So we have at least two face-to-face uh, -face meetings for each working group during these two years that we are. So we have 36 uh, cost member countries and we have the cost inclusiveness <coughs> target countries. So the uh, dark blue ones are the ones that started the, in the first management committee and then we were uh, growing as the national representatives were naming people that lobbied them to be named. And uh, the yellow and, uh, oh, I don't know how to say this color here. Yeah, this orangey are the ones, inclusiveness ITCs that were at the beginning. And uh, the yellow ones are ITCs that join later on. So the same with the uh, pale blue ones. And we have, as the near neighbor country, we have Belarus. <coughs> so that has the right to observe and to contribute, but not vote. So just to the spreading of the action across the Europe, uh, I use the same color scheme. So the ITCs in orange and the blue ones are the, the cost countries. Uh, we have the Belarus, uh, and these are I just uh, magnifying this uh, map because we have all the uh, N NCs considered by cost. So any of this country could also, although they are not European, they could also uh, contribute as a near neighbor country. So far, we have Belarus, and I don't think that we will be joining more <laughs> for other countries. So we have the participants, and uh, Professor Modra Murovska is the chair of this uh, network. I'm the vice chair, and uh, we have been in the, our second year. So we have up to four participants. We, have, we could have more participants in the management uh, and core group meet, uh, management and core groups, but uh, we can be joined by anyone who wants to be part of one of the working groups. So, uh, so far the group of epidemiology we have reported and kind of my, map out the prevalence and incidence and uh, the paucity of data is appalling. So, what we have done is we have developed a protocol for a systematic review and we are looking into what we have in terms of prevalence in incidence in Europe and it's, it's very low. So, but this is one of the first things that we have done. And the other uh, aims of the epidemiology group is to synchronize data across and to, to produce a document suggesting uh, how to classify patients and in, in a way that we could actually respond to what you're saying that we have uh, some similar ways of assessing these patients. Uh, the working group of biomarkers has developed some guidelines for infectious associ infection associated clinical and biomedical research uh, we also have done a survey who has been published on the landscape of MECFS. We have this other publication from the biomarking group. Uh, the social economics is trying to estimate the social and economic burden. So this is a work in progress. There are some, I think that 
you have some of the social economic group members who is presenting some uh, initial research for you. I think that it's tomorrow. Rachel, yeah. So um, the clinical research working group is uh, challenging because it's related to uh, specifying potential clinical diagnosis. So there is a gr group of clinicians that are attending patients and there is other participants that don't see patients. So for example, uh, in the uh, one of our member participants is a neurologist from Serbia and he has seen some uh, adolescents with MECFS there. But the, the majority of our participants from the Eastern European, they have done some work in the biomarker side, but it's very difficult for them to identify because the disease is not even recognized worse than what we have here. So we are working on agreement on clinical diagnosis criteria, and we have also a survey on European practice for diagnosis and treatment. Uh, the working group five is the one that we also have been involved with uh, more closely, which is the integration of early career investigators. So we have nine grants for people to go to short uh, scientific terms, meetings, uh, uh, short missions, and uh, mostly of them are from ITC countries. And we have so far two summer training schools, one in Pavia in Italy and the other one in Berlin. And Luis and I went there to summer school for translation research in MECFS. Um, we have, in Berlin, we have 11 uh, students, uh, and one of them, I was so proud because she was 60-something uh, years old doing her PhD, and I think that it was brilliant. And uh, we have the working group six, uh, which will be started dissemination, disseminating, and patient involvement is something that is also a work in progress. Uh, so basically, we are trying to map existing resources, uh, seeking agreement for standardizing protocols, establishing biobank platform and bioinformatics for data repository, and raising awareness and engaging people. When I say communities here, I'm talking about scientific and patients as well. Uh, challenges. I'm sure that you know, I don't need to say that, but there is an imbalance of participation uh, among the working groups. Uh, some participating countries are not very involved. I think that there is something related to being named as a participant in a European uh, network, but necessarily is not the cup of tea. So. They have their name there, but are not contributing more, so it's a, a bit of a challenge. Uh, in relation to what we dreamed about was to have samples and data being used, firstly being collected in a standardized way that we could actually compare them, and then to, uh, to go about with different researchers and, and to collaborate in this way by sharing samples, sharing data. And we have something that we have to consider is the requirements, ethical and legal requirements and social requirements about this. So we were trying to, uh, to put forward our experience with the biobank that Louis is talking about tomorrow, the UK MECFS biobank. Uh, that we thought thoroughly about all these steps, but it's, it's a bit of challenge for some researchers that can say, oh, the UK is trying to push what you have done into, so we have to be very diplomatic and very uh, working in, in small steps. So 
lack of funding of research is a reality that you all know. And one of the big issues that we are having now is Brexit. Because one of the uh, issues that the cost requires is sustainability of this network that they started to bring in on. And uh, of course, our colleagues are talking about grant applications for funding agencies like the Horizon 2020 or instruments like the Euronets. But uh, at the first time that the, uh, the Brexit was passed and we had the meeting, some of our colleagues were like, what about you? What to do? And I think that this is quite challenging at the moment. But uh, they are also considering tying up with the uh, EU and Canada, some partners. And at least we have the experience with the NIH grants. Uh, we also are considering uh, developing these research programs uh, and also involved, involving like uh, the small enterprises and even big ones if we can. Um, and this is a, a nice picture of some of the working groups of epidemiology and socioeconomics that it was, uh, we held a meeting last week at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So we have a core group meeting and uh, two small working groups that were there to push the agenda. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.